Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, Communications Director for the City of Las Vegas, David Riggleman. Coming up on this program, Councilwoman Tarkanian receives a very prestigious award. And you'll meet a special canine that's using his amazing skills to help the Clark County Police Department keep guns out of our schools. The Councilwoman, who represents Ward 1, is also our Mayor Pro Tem. It's Lois Tarkanian, and she joins me now. Councilwoman, thanks for being here. It's kind of a bittersweet day. It is, it is. This is your last Access City Council show. I know, it's my last chance to be a TV star. Here it goes. <laughs> you, That's it. You'll always be a star to us yeah. around here. But the Councilwoman is term limited at this point. She served 14 years on the council, and because of term limits, she's having there to step aside. So this is the last show. You and I have done many of these over the we last 14 years. Have. We certainly and have. And I can already tell you, I'm, I'm already missing you, and you haven't even Aww. haven't even left yet. So um, it's well, been a I pleasure. Well, I know I'm going to miss everybody. I don't think people realize how highly skilled and how effective in interaction with other people the city personnel are. We work at it, um, but we have a good mentor uh, in, in people like you who want to make sure that we're engaged with the community. That's really been one of your legacies, Councilwoman, is bringing yeah. people together to talk about issues and finding solutions. Well, you know, when I first started, we had people who were making derogatory remarks about the city. Uh, I hadn't even started yet, practically, and but they were saying they didn't do this and they didn't do right. that. And I said to them, well, have you gone to them or have you told them? And none of them had. And I said, well, what you're doing is you're not. <laughs> you're not engaging. You're, you're not in utilizing the resources yeah. the city has put together for you. So we developed neighborhood associations, uh, not the ones, you know, that are strict in how you plan and everything, yeah. which is people who came, came together. Neighborhood associations, not the, homeowners associations. Not homeowners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, in those neighborhood associations, I'm just so proud of the skills they've obtained. And uh, my goodness, they're they're getting so efficient in how they give a little short notice on what's happening. Sure. They know who to work with. And our city personnel are so great in responding and getting things done. Very proud of the city. I don't think people recognize how very, very, really great the city personnel are. Well, thank you, Councilwoman. I appreciate that. And uh, obviously, uh, your thumbprint uh, on on the city has has helped get us to that point. So I think I put my name on one of the buildings we had, so it's up there. Yeah, there you go. There I you go. I put mine and my husband's name right. on it. That's right. If you're not sure where Ward One is, we can show you. Uh, the councilwoman knows this. Uh, over the last 14 years, she has been watching over this ward very carefully. It's really the center of the valley right there. Uh, just west of the uh, the downtown uh, extends kind of along US 95 to the south. And then there's that finger that sticks up all the way to Cheyenne. But if you live in that area, work in that area, you're in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. And of course, you're represented by Lois Turner. And it's a very so. diverse ward, very diverse. Yeah. It is. And um, there's there's a changing of the guard coming here. Yes, and so, there is. Um, there is. But that's the way it works. Uh, that is the way it works. And each person brings their own abilities and their own thoughts. And uh, you try and build on the person that was there and then just keep going exactly. and we get better and better. Can you trust the public? The voters are going to go out there and vote their conscience. Right. And, and you just trust that the, the American people, the people in our community, made the right choices. Right. You know, so. Right. All right. So, Councilwoman, we want to talk about, uh, this is great. I, I'm so happy for this. Optum Care uh, opened a new cancer center uh, yes. here in Las Vegas on uh, West Charleston, 2300 West Charleston. Uh, you and the mayor have worked so hard to raise the bar when it comes to health care here in Southern Nevada. Right. Our medical district in Ward 1 is a huge uh, addition but other facilities like this too, making it easier for people. In the past, people would go to California for this kind of treatment, now they stay here. Yes, they do, and uh, we have, uh, my staff and I have gone through the building and seen how it's how it would be handled, and uh, it's just excellent. Yeah. It's very, very customer friendly. Mm -hmm. When you get infusions for cancer, usually you're, you're very tightly in a row, and you can't do much except hold the, <laughs> You know, but here they have an area where you can have somebody come and meet with you. You know, you have yeah. someone in your family. They have a bench for books and where you could keep some food or yeah. something. Trying to make you more comfortable. That's right. Maybe ease your anxiety right. too. Right, and it's in a room that has a lot of light. It has a view of uh, parts of the city, mm -hmm. and I think it takes your mind off the infusion yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. welcome to the neighborhood, Optum. We're glad to have you, and I know yes. this has been one of your 
uh, really pet projects to, to raise the level of health care in our community. Absolutely. And, and, and as you leave, look, look at that, another, another and addition. Be, and it can raise a lot further, a lot more. You know, we've done some very exciting things, and we've gotten some really good things in there. But what we have to do now is just continue and get better and yep, better. Absolutely. Councilman, I have to mention this. I'm not going to let you get out of here without saying this, but uh, you recently received a wonderful award, most deserved. Um, why don't you tell everybody about your experience uh, at Easter Seals? Well, I, I was really very surprised. I was called to attend a, a luncheon, and I had no idea that it was uh, they were going to honor me at the luncheon, which they, they did. And uh, uh, the, the thing was, first of all, it's one of the most beautiful awards I've ever gotten, a big red heart, and you mm. know it, because it's from the heart that Easter Seals works. Mm. And um, the thing that uh, sort of surprised me was they named the uh, award after me. In yes, other the words, it's the Humanitarian of the Year. Humanitarian, and, and so yes. from here on out, every Humanitarian of the Year who receives it, they're going to be receiving the Lois Tarkanian, the Doctor Lois Tarkanian Humanitarian of the Year award. Yes, and to me, that's a very, very big honor, and it helps so people don't forget you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and Councilwoman, I think I feel most deserved because you've helped so many organizations across the valley. Uh, you've been involved in so many things, you and, and your entire family. And you're not just a elected official, you're not just uh, an educator, you're, you're far more than that. And I'm so glad that Easter Seals recognizes Well, I, I was very pleased. I, I was very honored. They're a very highly respected group, and this is a brand new award, and to be have it named after me was really... Congratulations. I'm happy for you. you. Thank you. And Councilwoman, we really want to talk about this. You've raised the level of the quality of the parks in your ward. Some of them were a little rough around the edges when you came in office. Yes. We're making great strides here. Woofter Family Park is, is one of them. This is out at uh, 1600 Rock Springs Drive. We recently had a groundbreaking there. That's what it's gonna look like. You're getting the impression as to right. what we're doing to, to improve it. And you can see, yeah, it, it needs some attention. A lot so, of attention, yeah. a lot of attention. And uh, we, instead of having two areas for dogs, we're, we're going to have three areas. We're going to have more trees. We're going to have more sitting. And uh, we're going to fix it so it's easier to get there. You can see the rough spots in yeah, the lawn. It, yeah, it's, and it's, yeah it, it's, it's, it's an old park, and it, it's a, time to fix it up. It's a very old park, and we're going to have some new types of equipment for dogs. Yeah. That are really fun. Yeah, some toys from some, not not quite that large, but they're going to have some uh, amenities for the dogs to play with, too, and on. So. Yes. Councilman, congratulations. That work at Woofter Family Park should be done around the end of the year, somewhere yes. in that time frame. And every so. single park that we have has been brought up to the highest standards we can bring it up before, I made sure, before we leave. And to me, that's a big thing. Yeah. Councilwoman, we need to take a short break right now, but when we come back, beautiful new trees and wider walking spaces are just a few of the improvements coming to the Charleston and Rancho area. We want to let you know what else the city has in store when we come back, so please stay with us. That's right, Bob. In order for our cyclists to be more visible to motorists, the city of Las Vegas is now providing bright green boxes for them to use. Boxers? Boxes. Green boxes. You may have noticed them in many of our intersections. They are there to give cyclists a place to stop, a safe distance from vehicles at red lights. The purpose of the bike boxes is to allow people to get ahead of the traveling uh, vehicle and to actually, if there's a group of them, there can be a group of them queued in the area. The boxes are fairly new in Las Vegas, but motorists are taking notice, which means they are also taking notice of our cyclists, and that makes for safer roads for everyone. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Boxers. Our family is no less than any other family. My heart doesn't, My heart doesn't see race. race. Even love is love. love. Welcome back everyone. Soon the area around Charleston and Rancho is going to look a whole lot different thanks to some big improvements the city has planned. With us today to discuss what's going to be done is Gina Venglis with our Public Works Department. Gina, thanks so much for being here. You are one of the shining stars here at the city and I know Councilwoman Tarkanian so very proud of the work that you and your team are doing and we're just anxious to give everybody this preview of what's coming. Charleston and Rancho is just kind of the heart of the city. It's it's an area that people are all familiar with. 
It's and blossoming. Yeah. It's just blossoming. What they have done, what they have planned, is efficient and effective, and it's absolutely, it'll be gorgeous. Gina, what's the strategy? What are we looking to accomplish? This is an iconic area of town, traditional. It's been this way in many, many, uh, for many, many years. What are we yes. trying to do? We are really excited to add some street improvements into Charleston between Rancho and MLK. Um, Project Neant helps stem that because of the connectivity down by MLK right, right. Where, where some of the improvements do come into the Charleston corridor. Um, most importantly though is the medical district and the city's push to really revitalize this as our medical hub in our community. Um, having beautiful streetscape, wider sidewalks for accessibility, um, and beautifying it with nice street trees and crosswalks is just going to really change the yeah. feel to this very important arterial. This arterial carries so much traffic. Sure does. But I mean, this is going to be a game changer for that area. It really is. We are going to be helping the capacity by adding three new right turn pockets within the corridor and additionally adding two new traffic signals at Tonopah and at Westwood, which is really going to help flow and turning mm -hmm. movements in the corridor. So this is just going to add to that ability to be able to move around easier. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. Thank you. It absolutely is. And the traffic improvements are great, but so will be the pedestrian flow. Yeah, because exactly. of the wider sidewalks, as we all know, if you go out into that area, it's filled with pedestrians. It's filled with cyclists. We will have bike lanes in the corridor that will connect to Rancho and Shadow bike lanes. Um, and provide that accessibility. Yeah, that's great. And Councilwoman, I know this is integral to growing our medical district. The right. idea, folks, if you're not uh, familiar with what we're trying to do, we're trying to make this the medical hub of our valley. The medical school from UNLV, the new medical school, is going to be located there. Right. Hospitals are already there. The Lou Ruvo um, Center, uh, part of the Cleveland Clinic, is already right. in the area. So and what the we're autistic trying to do is, is grow that to bring more medical service to the people of Southern Nevada. So as we said before, right. they're inclined to stay here to get treatment rather right. than to go to Southern California or Arizona. That's why we want the medical school and we want the residents from the medical school. If you stay in Vegas a while, you really get to love it and we want to make them want to stay. Gina, by making these changes, what does that do as far as making the area more inviting? Talk about your experience and what our strategy is, why we're doing what we're doing, and the impact that it has ultimately uh, in, in improving not just traffic, but, but everything. It really does. If you just use downtown and as, as an example in the Main Street Commerce couplet yeah. that finished up recently, mm -hmm. I mean, you walk down those streets and it feels like we're it feels so different mm -hmm. than it used to and we are so excited to bring that fresh feel to the Charleston corridor yeah. as well. Th those were home runs. Those mm -hmm. projects changed the whole complexion of those neighborhoods and I know that's really what you're good. looking to see. That's, that's what we are and it's it's mm -hmm. going to be absolutely beautiful and um, we want a really great gigantic home run out yeah. of the park. Yeah exactly. Well Gina's at bat so we're in well, you know, If you go down there now and you're on the sidewalk and you have a um, a wheelchair, it's difficult sometimes to even move forward because they exactly. have the light posts in the way and there's not enough right. room for your wheelchair. And as Gina mentioned, Council, we have a lot of people needing to use the sidewalks. We got to make it easier right. for folks. That's Absolutely. exactly right. Absolutely. And we want to make it aesthetically beautiful and relaxing. Yeah. We have little pocket parks there and everything. I think, you know, it's the wellness park is going to be nice yeah. and it'll be something where you can sit and be happy and, you know. Yeah. You not worry so much about what we usually worry about, that yeah. we'll have trees and plants yeah. and flowers and it will be relaxing. It'll be very inviting, yeah. yeah. Gina, but it's we're running wonderful. out of time oh. but I, for, for our segment here, but I want to give you the final word. Anything else you want to add as far as the project and uh, what, what, what's our time sure. frame? Um, this project is funded through the RTC and we are looking at starting construction next winter. Wow, coming right up. Mm -hmm. And completion about what time then? So. Um, we're looking at about a year and a half on the construction not schedule. Not too bad, yeah. After Project Neon, that's nothing, you know. Right. <laughs> so. And it's the dollar value for the construction is about 14 million. So we're wow. really investing yeah. in this corridor. That's terrific.
Well, congratulations. Best of luck with your project. Thanks. I know you'll do a great job. You always do. Public and, Works always does a great job. They surely do. They got a great team. As, they as have an seen. absolutely so. great team, and they listen to the people who are going to use it, and they follow through accordingly. Yeah, they sure do. They're so. not a bureaucracy in that team. No, they're, 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 it's, it's working team. They're results oriented. For right. Sure, they so. certainly are. Well, Gina, thanks so much for being on the program. We really appreciate it. We'll get you back here later on, maybe with an update on how things are going. Then. Okay, okay, my so, pleasure. Thank good. you. Well, folks, we need to take another short break, but when we come back, the Clark County School District Police Department recently welcomed four new officers to their team, but these officers have four legs. You'll meet one of these new canines right after this, so please stay with us. You're not going to want to miss this. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. I mean, he had the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. Ever dream of being in the movies? Why not bring the movies to you? And cut! Coffee. That was good. We're going to have to go 10 more times. Become a filming location today. Register your home and or business at NevadaFilm.com. If anybody needs me, I'll be in my trailer. Welcome back, everyone. We have some very special guests with us today in the studio. We want to introduce you to the recently sworn Clark County School District Police Officer, Ziggy, right here. Uh, yes, Ziggy, Ziggy is with us. Ziggy is with us. And of course, he's with his handler, Officer G uh, well, Rob Harris. Rob, Rob Harris. Harris. Yeah. Uh, and we also have uh, their sergeant, Sergeant Brian Zink. Gentlemen and Ziggy, it is a honor to have you here. Councilwoman Tarkanian, uh, former school district trustee, former educator, school safety is near and dear to her, and it always has been. And all of you are raising the bar for seeing that that is at a whole new level, protecting our, our kids. And I know this is something you really right. want to talk about. Absolutely right. The protection of our kids is yeah. so bad, what's happening throughout the country exactly. and right here in Las Vegas. So everyone, and I'll let uh, Rob and Brian talk more about this, but Ziggy's mission is to find weapons, specifically guns, in our, in our schools. Yeah. Tell us about that, Rob. So uh, we have four dog teams in the Clark County School District Police Department. Department, and that's their sole mission is to find guns and our dogs are trained on four specific odors one is post blast residue which is just a fancy uh, fancy way of saying that guns been fired mm -hmm. uh, gun oil the ammunition and then the casing after it's been fired so with those scent pictures the dogs are going to come up and find a gun that is incredible yeah. that they can detect that sergeant zinc i gotta ask you this and this may be the hard question to ask program I know has been in operation for maybe six months. What have the dogs found so far? Well, so far we're very, very excited with the numbers so far. So our dogs have been associated with seven different uh, firearm finds. Uh, six of those were directly associated either at a school or with a school, crime that had been committed at a school. And then one of those was through mutual aid where our officer got a call out from, uh, or one of, well, from Metro to go out and assist them in searching uh, a stolen vehicle for a firearm and lo and behold, Jack, one of our uh, Springer Spaniels, found it within a minute, matter of minutes. Wow. Rob, I want to ask you, is there one breed of dog that's better at doing this than another, or, or uh, tell us about that? No, so the, the breed selection isn't really the important part when it comes to uh, police detection. It's about the drive and focus. So if it has high energy, it can focus on the task, it doesn't get distracted easily. Uh, we, we just want that drive. And of course, they do everything for a ball, so. Ah, that's the incentive. <laughs> that's the incentive. Uh, uh, yes. Very good, very good. Brian, there are how many dogs in the state that can do this? So uh, right now, to the best of our knowledge, there's five dogs that are specifically trained for gun detection in the state of Nevada. One is with Metro and their uh, Haida team, and then we have the other four. The other four in the Clark County School. I've got to believe, Councilwoman, parents have just got to think this is going to keep our schools safe. I mean, we got a dog sniffing for weapons with all the 
uh, active shooter stories that we see in the news uh, all too often. This has just got to make everyone feel a lot more secure, including the students themselves. Absolutely. I just wonder, uh, how, do you, how do you determine where you're going to go a certain day? Because you can't cover all the schools in one day. It's no. too much. But uh, That's a great question. Yeah, what's the... So Without each, divulging anything. No, no, then, yeah. it's fine. So there's a couple ways we approach it. So each dog team has an area of responsibility. And if a certain school is pretty active and they need some additional police presence, we'll How go and go. help that way. Yeah. Uh, we do have our random search program, which is uh, spearheaded by our superintendent and our chief. And they dictate those things and they let us know where we're going to go and we go handle business. Yeah. You got to be proud that your department has really stepped up. I mean, there are five dogs that do this in the state. Four of them are in your department, Sergeant. That's 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 huge. It is absolutely so. Um, I've been on this department for 16 years, and about year two, I met Officer Harris here. And back then, he had the passion and the drive to start suggesting, "Can we get a K-19? Can we get a K-19? This would be a valuable asset that we could bring to to the valley and to and to the school district." And I hate to say that it took that long because it's one of those pro programs that it sounds like a great idea. We we they, everyone looks at it, it gets tabled. We look at it, it gets tabled. But then, with the increase of violence and then weapons being found on our campuses, this was just the Everything perfect changed, time yeah. to bring it on board. A new superintendent. Who had, who's all about school safety and making these kids feel safe and secure when they come to school, and then us wanting the parents to feel safe and, and secure knowing that their kids are going to a safe environment. It just worked out perfect. Yeah. Timing was just great, and that's, that's why we have the, the dogs that we have now. Officer Harris, Rob, this is a made to order for you because you, from your military experience, this is uh, this is what you did in the military. It right? is, it is. So my first dog, his name was Rocco, and he was a Belgian Malinois, and he was he was a lot of fun, and he was such a superstar. He was the number one dog for all North America, wow. and it, it afforded us an opportunity to go on Animal Planet and shoot a segment with no them. No kidding. And have some so fun. you're already a celebrity, you know? Well, so. I don't know. I think the dogs are the celebrities. <laughs> I'm just the guy holding the leash. <laughs> So Rod, now the Belgian Malinois that you had in the Army, different mission than, than Ziggy's. Yeah, so his mission then was uh, narcotics and he also had a patrol function. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So patrol means that those are the guys with the pointy ears yeah, and yeah. they do the biting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now uh, Ziggy's not going to bite anybody. Uh, he's going to lick him to death. He but, would. Uh, he's a big love bug. But he's going to identify if there's a, a gun around that shouldn't be there, he's going to tell us. Absolutely. He'll, he'll show that change of behavior. That's what makes us a canine team. It's my job to notice that change and then we go to work and handle yeah. business. Well, wow, it's a great story. We're so glad and honored to have you on the show. It's a uh, um, it's a councilman, I know public safety, especially within our schools, yeah. is so important, and this is a, just a major step forward. And there aren't many places that have the dog teams, are there? No, ma'am. No, ma we're, we're stepping on a cutting edge here, really? and we're showing that it's uh, valid and it's help, it's effective. And we, it would really be good if we had one dog and a team in each school, but we don't. Uh, so we have to share it. You've worked out a way on that too, so that's wonderful. Siggy's got a lot of energy, so he'll he'll get to a lot of places. So that's and, true. Yeah, he'll get to a lot of places, and it shows how the ZCSD Police Department is growing yeah, all the time. Absolutely. Every year you're doing something new and better. Absolutely, and it is one of those things we are looking to add four more dogs onto the team because oh, four we have more. have decided we we have uh, it's been easy to identify what a great asset it is, what a force multiplier it is because. Uh, like we talked about earlier, the dogs can show up and they can clear a section of lockers in a matter of minutes where it would take somebody with a key or a combination yeah, to open this locker through and go through. Yeah. Parking lot searches as well, the dogs can run through a parking lot and I mean we've had a couple hits on cars that have not been associated with weapons on campus but mom or dad or a, a local law enforcement person who had guns in the car when they were at the range over the weekend and that odor's fresh or they yeah. were moving guns over the weekend, something like that and so they, they, do, <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they train in on it, they hit it and it just really helps us do our job and make the schools a lot safer. Sergeant's interesting, uh, Brian. I, you see them at the airport now too, so they're mm -hmm. being used. This, yep. It's it's uh, it's funny. Is with all the technology we have, a dog's nose is oh, still can't the way beat to go. It. Yeah, exactly. Can't beat right. the dog's yeah. nose. Councilman, we're running out of time here, and this is an important part here. Um, since this is uh, your last show, uh, we want to leave you with a special video we produced for uh, Councilman Tarkanian. Has served here at the City of Las Vegas for 14 years. We're really going to miss you. I'm going to miss you um, more than you know. So before we show the video to say goodbye, is there anything you want to, to add or say? I just want to say quickly that I have felt very honored to represent Ward 1. It's a difficult ward. It's very, very diverse. You have to keep your thoughts on all ends of the spectrum. 
the people have been wonderful. They voted me in, you know, three times, and I think it was 85 percent or 82 yeah. percent. So I'm very, very grateful. It wasn't very to them. close. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I feel honored to uh, be part of the city council and this city because I don't think people give enough credit to the city and the great people they have and how innovative we are. You know, we are cutting edge in so many ways. This was one example today. So I just want to say thank you to the residents and I want to say I know that what we've done has been exciting and we've been able to do some great things and I know that there's more excitement and more great things to come right. and I'll be watching. <laughs> so take care. Yeah, too, okay. Too. So we really want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Access City Council. I want to especially thank Sergeant Zink, Officer Harris, and Ziggy for being on the program today. Uh, don't miss our next show beginning on July 4th with Councilman Cedric Creer. Of course, you can catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone, and please enjoy the video. that you are a bona fide resident at your stated address and that you will faithfully perform the duties of the office in which you are about to enter, so help you God. We've worked very hard in Ward 1. We're an older ward and it was a deteriorating ward and we had to stop that and make it change direction and I think we have. Well, I think it's no surprise to everybody out there if you commute at all uh, through the spaghetti bowl each morning, you've probably heard a little bit about Project Neon. It's basically a revamp, a widening, uh, an improvement of that whole interchange there, uh, I-15, US-95. A lot of this is right in Ward 1. Congratulations to Councilwoman Lois Tarkanian and her appointment by uh, Mayor of Las Vegas, Carolyn Goodman. And I would motion to appoint Councilwoman Lois Tarkanian as Mayor Pro Tem. How can you encapsulate Lois Tarkanian, without thinking of her whole family and history of Nevada. And then, of course, probably the longest serving or one of the longest serving council persons coming in and having 14 years of council work for Ward 1, which in turn has given her a great life. And knowing that she's stepping down from this and unfortunately forced out because she's term limited, um, she'll do something else. This is a lady who you just can't have her sitting at home. So I, I do want to say, and I'm going to look right at you, Lois, if you're watching, and Mayor Pro Tem, my Mayor Pro Tem, and Councilwoman for 14 years. I'm going to miss you. Mm -hmm.